In this video, I'm going to talk about blocks. And I mentioned that in a previous video, but I'm going to go into a little bit more detail now into why blocks are useful and where you can pull additional blocks in that come with the program. Now, first, a little review on how to create a block and how blocks are updated. So in general, remember that blocks are objects that consist of um, many individual pieces kind of assembled together into one block. And then the main benefit of them is that when they're frequently repeated, you can update the design and all the block its instances will update. So I have here an example of a uh, decorative column that might be a good use for a block because a lot of times you'd see that repeated maybe around four different sides of a building. And so if you have four building elevations, you could have maybe eight or 10 or 12 of these columns around on different sides of the building. So to review the process of making a block, I can select all those objects once they're all drawn and kind of set up the way I want. And then I'll type B for block. And then I would give that block a name. Maybe I'll just call it column if I'm only going to have one type. Otherwise, you can give it a more specific name. And then I'll pick a base point using an object snap on the block. And that's an important step because if you skip that, then the base point you can see stays at 0, 0, 0 point in space which doesn't have any relationship to the block itself. So I'm gonna click on this pick point icon and then choose an object snap on the block. So I might pick a, a midpoint there on the bottom. And you already had the object selected, so that part is done. If you did need to select additional objects, you could select the um, select objects icon and then click additional pieces to add. So if that's um, all that I need to include, then I just hit okay and the block is done. So the difference is now it's only one object, as you can see when you select it. The grip represents the base point that you previously selected. And so if I need to copy or move or rotate it, it's very easy to do that without losing any parts because before this was 51 different little lines and arcs. So now I would copy this around. Maybe if I had um, you know eight or 10 different ones around the building, just to show you kind of how that works. There's a couple other instances. If I needed to undo a block, let's say one of the columns needs to be a little different for some reason. I could select it and then use the explode command, which is X, or the explode icon is on the modify section of the ribbon. So if I um, don't have a specific reason to explode the block, you want to try to avoid doing that if at all possible. And updating the design or the look of the block is not a good enough reason to explode it because in newer versions of CAD, you have the block editor, which allows you to change the shape or design without having to explode it. So in order to do that, I can select one instance of the block. It doesn't make a difference which one. And then right click and go to block editor. You can also use edit block in place. It's a slightly different interface, but would still allow you to change the design. Um, I'm gonna use block editor because I think it's a little bit more intuitive for most people. So now I'm in specific block edit mode. You can see how the screen has changed background colors and that kind of reminds you and lets you know that you're in block edit mode. You'll see that the base point is defined by the uh, kind of two axes that you can see. And uh, you're allowed to um, basically edit this in any normal way that you want. In other words, all the normal drawing tools would work. I could draw more, I could copy, move, rotate, scale, stretch, whatever you needed. All the normal tools would be um, functional here. Note that the ribbon is different. It's uh, because it's context sensitive, it's switched to show block editing specific tools. When you're done editing the block, let me make some kind of a small change. Maybe I'll delete this center detail area. So when you're finished, you can hit close block editor on the upper right corner. And it would normally asks you if you want to save the changes. Uh, it didn't because I had already just saved the changes to the block. So now you can see how all three instances of the block updated. Obviously, it's very time efficient to use blocks this way when you have something that's repeated, if there's any chance that it will change. Typically, even if there is no chance that it'll change, if you have something that's repeated around a plan or a symbol, then you would want to use a block for that. It also is possible to include text in blocks. Um, if you want the text to be different in different instances, then you would use what's called an attribute. And uh, that's going to be have to be in another more advanced CAD video as well. Part that I want to go over when it comes to blocks is bringing in blocks that come with AutoCAD. 
Now this will depend a little bit on whether you're in AutoCAD or AutoCAD architecture because AutoCAD architecture comes with um, a lot more blocks that are specific to building design. Uh, but in general, you have two different ways to pull blocks in. You have the design center and you have the tool palette. Now to get to the design center, I'm just gonna type DC and it takes a moment and then the design center will open. It does act as a palette so I can change the size I can set it to auto hide uh, if I want with the uh, auto hide button on the left or on the uh, top of the vertical bar that acts as the title bar. Um, otherwise, the design center allows you to pull in pre-drawn blocks that AutoCAD provides. Now, like I said a second ago, it depends a little bit on whether you have AutoCAD architecture or standard. If you have AutoCAD architecture, you'll have a tab called AEC content. AEC stands for the Architecture, Engineering, and Construction Industry. And on that tab, you can expand the kind of folders here and then get to various objects like furniture, plants, and they're all categorized and organized quite well. There's also electrical fixtures like light fixtures, um, mechanical symbols, um, people and scale figures, specialty equipment uh, like grab bars and things like that. So if you find something that you need, you click on the folder and then you can pull in the version by clicking on the thumbnail and click and drag into your drawing. Now what's really good about these blocks is that many of them are 3D, but at the same time they work very cleanly and simply in 2D. So they're pretty flexible and powerful blocks that way. Again, this is only for AutoCAD architecture as opposed to regular AutoCAD. So if you don't have AutoCAD architecture, or even if you uh, do, you have a folders tab where you would find your blocks. And you'll see that there's the standard list of folders on the left side for all the folders on the hard drive of your computer, and you have to path to the right spot. It may not be pathed there automatically. So I'm under the C drive, program files, Autodesk, AutoCAD Architecture 2011. Note if you're in an older version, it will be uh, listed there without being under the Autodesk category. And then sample, and then design center. So it's kind of buried on your hard drive, um, but if you follow that general concept of pathing, you should be able to find it. Now on the design center, there's groups on the window on the right, such as home space planner, house designer, etc. And if you wanted to, you can pull one of those in with the same click and drag concept that I talked about a minute ago. And then in this case though, you have to click to drop it where you want. And then the command line says, enter the scale factor. And then I would enter for repeating the same scale factor and enter for the rotation angle. So again, I'm on the folders tab, I've passed to the right folder, and then when I'm on design center as highlighted, I click and drag from the right side, click to drop it, and then enter three times to kind of finish placing it. Now, when you do it this way, you're bringing in a whole category's worth of blocks. The house designer is what I chose, but you could use any of the other ones if you wanted. So now the way that you bring it in is that is still grouped together as a block. So this is one instance where you would have to explode the blocks once in order to get to the smaller pieces if you wanted to move them around or pull them apart. So I can hit explode. And now let's say I want this uh, sink right here. I can move that out as a separate piece. So that's an important uh, kind of trick to getting to those individual parts is using the explode command there. Now, if you just want one block, let's say the toilet or something, you don't have to bring in this whole category. If you expand Design Center back on the left side, you'll see that there are individual files with the same names as those previews that I just saw earlier, such as the Home Space Planner. So then I could expand that with a plus and click on the word blocks and get to the individual parts of whatever I wanted. So you have the option to pull in the whole category when you have the word Design Center highlighted, or you can dig a little bit deeper and pull in individual pieces, whichever is easier. So let's say I want the piano, I can click and drag that in, 
and then I just let go of my mouse cursor and it drops it wherever I let go. So it's a little bit easier that way you don't have to hit enter and all that. And then you can move them around, rotate them, whatever you want. So those are two easy ways to use the design center. Now I've switched over to more of a uh, traditional AutoCAD setup, vanilla AutoCAD, not AutoCAD architecture to show you how the tool palette can also be useful. If you're using AutoCAD architecture, the tool palette is more for drawing walls and doors and windows rather than bringing in simple blocks. If you're using AutoCAD, then the tool palette is going to be your second option for where to bring blocks into your drawing. So I typed TP to open the tool palette. Again, mine is on auto hide, so I can turn that on or off with the little auto hide at the top. And then you have various tabs for different types of blocks you can bring in. Uh, note that they're categorized by what type of blocks they are, like annotation, architectural, mechanical, etc. And on each one, there's the imperial samples and the metric samples. So be cautious there that you use the right objects depending on what your units are and what country you're drawing in. So these blocks have the little lightning bolts next to them here, and that's kind of important because that tells you that the blocks are dynamic. Not every block is dynamic. Because remember when I talked about these blocks earlier, we talked about how there's only one grip, and the block just kind of sits there and represents what it needs to represent. The dynamic blocks that are on the tool palette are much more powerful. You can technically create these yourself if you want, but uh, like I said, that's a little bit more advanced. When you bring in a dynamic block, you're just clicking on the tool once to activate it. You're not dragging. And then you click where you want to drop the tool or drop the block. So there's a toilet. Now, what makes these dynamic is that there's a lot of other properties and abilities built into them. So I can select this, and you'll see there's more than one grip. It has three grips. Some have more than others. In this particular one, there's three. So you can kind of figure out what they do by clicking on the grips to see what happens. This grip, you can see, is going to flip it back and forth a lot like doing the mirror command. Now this uh, square blue one is kind of the standard grip, which is the base point that allows you to move the object. But this other triangle grip that is kind of floating out away from the block, if you click on that, you can see that there's actually nine different views you can uh, set this block up to show as. plan view, front view, or side view, and three different types of toilets. So if I want to switch to a round toilet and plan view, I can do that with just selecting the one that I want from the pull down. Or if I want an old-fashioned pull chain from front view, I can do that as well. So dynamic blocks allow the block to be changed, and that's why they're called dynamic. And sometimes it's about the view angle, but other times it's about the size, dimensional qualities of the blocks. So you can try the various ones and see what they do using the grips. The other thing you can do that makes it a little bit easier to understand, because sometimes the grips are not very intuitive, is to go to the properties palette. And you can see at the bottom where it has the type of view. And there are the same choices as I had with the grips. So if you can't figure out the grips very easily on a dynamic block, the properties palette will include the same information. So you can use that to switch back and forth. And sometimes that's a little easier because you can see kind of what you're picking um, rather than trying to guess. It's not a big deal with the toilet, but with some of the other types of blocks, it's a little easier. Like for the door one, for example. So you have more grips. And some of these control the size. In that case, those gray hash marks relate to pre-specified sizes that the block allows you to choose. But I'm not really very aware of which one I'm choosing. If you use the properties palette, then you can actually see which one you're choosing. So it's a little bit easier to control uh, what the size is going to be. So that's kind of a basic idea of how blocks work. Uh, again, um, later on, I may do another video for how to create dynamic blocks and get a little bit deeper into it.